woo woo this is cg woo woo hooga booga wamba mamba i am welcoming you to the cg woo woo things i am being the hosting type persons john xd this is being the things where we are talking about the Fortean things, and I am telling you about the weird things and the comics gating things. I am telling you the hail, hail to the comics gating things, and I am being the asshole type person, the cunting person, because. I am making fun of the things where the people speak more than one language things and being the American persons I only speak only speaking one language things so I am making fun of the persons who is speaking more than one of the things Welcome to CG Woo Woo I am your host John XD this is the show where we show the Fortean the weird, the comic skate adjacent, the fandom menace adjacent, the occult related, and whatever the fuck else I decide is cool. I am your host, John XD, or whatever the fuck else I'm calling myself today. Hey guys, I think I gave myself the Tourette's. Let me explain. You know, sometimes you have such horrible thoughts when you're thinking about things that happened in the past and they're really, really cringy, and you sort of wince because the thought just stings you. And I found out a way, uh, a device in my head, where I can overpower that cringy thought by thinking of something even more cringier, by saying something so outrageous that it completely distracts my attention from the horrible thought I'm having. So, like, if I'm sit, oh my goodness, I'm having a horrible thought right now. <sighs> I'm gonna fuck everyone in the poop shoot, the goddamn poop shoot. <sighs> okay, it's gone. But the thing is, now it's all happening by itself. Shit, fuck. Well, our first bit of Fortiana, uh, the globalist cunts are revving up this whole uh, false flag alien invasion thing. So be on the lookout for more propaganda about uh, supposed alien sightings. Um, as far, you know, the reason I call them false flag alien invasions is because, uh, one, I agree with uh, the great Jay Dyer that uh, space is fake and gray. And I also, um, I also remember a, um, interview that I'd heard with, um, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, who was the head of the Temple of Set, and he was also, um, one of the PSYOP specialists, uh, who had a security clearance at the Presidio back in the 80s and 90s. He pretty much wrote some textbooks on, on psychological warfare. But, um, you know, he's de he was definitely uh, one of these people who were in the know, who had some inside information. And in one of his interviews, he said, you know, be on the lookout for a false flag alien invasion. Uh, you know, so, you know, we, we've been, we've been, uh, given, you know, two huge loads of bullshit over the past, uh, three years, you know, one with a, with a scamdemic and one with a, uh, a bullshit war, uh, instigated by, um, by creepy, uh, neocon Trotskyites. And, um, you just need to be aware of your surroundings and be aware of the zeitgeist because things are happening and things are getting real. And now a message from the Pope. I'm here with a departure mom, and I got my red clown, and those are on, and I'm holding my witches a crook, cause I just got a done doing a skittles a blessing in a Hamburg. We's a gonna do a nice a ecumenical a prayer a service, cause of the Vatican needs to get the ESG score up. Larry Finca says so. 
Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of the woo-woo for this episode. Um, I think I've talked before about um, Thomas Sheridan's commentary on the digital gin, and I just recently um, saw an excellent interview that the uh, Mark Clare Show did. Shout out to the Mark Clare Show. Um, if you're not familiar with his channel, go and subscribe to that on YouTube right now. But uh, he did a, a really good interview with Kiprian Armani, and Kiprian Armani, he used to, uh, well, he uh, before he became Orthodox, he was uh, known as Vin Armani, and he was on the Showtime um, reality show Gigolos for about six seasons or something like that. But anyway, he, uh, he became Orthodox, but he's a software developer, and he sort of gave his new newly found spiritual insights into, um, you know, what he's been uh, observing, you know, working in the tech industry for decades. Um, man's in his forties. He's a few years younger than I am. And, um, he was, you know, what, what he was talking about, you know, how the AI, um, you know, ties into how this, how this is all playing out, uh, you know, on the spiritual realm, it, it really does, uh, tie up what Thomas Sheridan was uh, originally observing about the digital gen, it, it actually ties it up quite nicely. It kind of gives you a glimpse of what could be its its projected end game. But the thing is, they don't have physical bodies like we do, and they don't really have consciousness like we do. So, you know, and they can't operate in the three dimensional real world the way we can. So, you know if it eventually comes to some sort of horrible, you know, real life scenario, um, paralleling the Butlerian Jihad where humans have to, you know, overthrow, uh, the shackles of a, you know, some, some type of, um, AI overlord, then, you know, so be it. But what the digital gin is for those of you who aren't familiar with Thomas Sheridan's stuff, uh, also subscribe to his channels. You can find him on YouTube. He's got like three different channels. One is Beyond Room 313 and one is uh, Thomas Sheridan and Thomas Sheridan 2. But he uh, he's really based. He talks about a lot of really good and interesting and woo-woo stuff. And um, he was talking about the digital gin because, you know, one thing about these um, these new phones and tablets is when they're not turned on, you know, they have this shiny, you know, black, uh, glossy screen on the face. And this is very reminiscent of, you know, polished black onyx or polished obsidian or some type of polished black stone that uh, people would use as a scrying mirror. And what a scrying mirror is, is it's, um, it's a tool used in divination by uh, sorcerers, necromancers, um, where you essentially, you know, turn out all the lights, light one or two candles on either side of the, um, polished surface and you gaze into it. Uh, you gaze at your face in the, uh, in the surface of the, of the scrying mirror until your, um, until your reflection disappears. And then according to, uh, you know, the practices, the face that reappears is the face of, you know, the, the um, spirit you're trying to summon and trying to talk to. And of course, you know, depending on what your religious beliefs are, these could be beneficent, you know, mischievous, um, neutral, or, you know, ma malevolent. But um, what Thomas Sheridan was talking about is, you know, these, uh, these, tablets and, uh, you know, these electronic devices that everyone has their noses permanently glued to these days are, um, just like an old scrying mirror and people are projecting all of their emotions and all of their focused energy and all of their attention away from the, you know, world and their surroundings around them and putting them into this one focal point, into this one object. And these objects are filled with fiber optic plasma and uh plasma is a a plasma fire is a smokeless fire and it's being ignited by the fire of electricity and um the jinn are described in uh in islamic demonologies as beings that are made of a smokeless fire and 
this is why Thomas Sheridan called this concept the digital gin, uh, that there's some type of, you know, depending on what your beliefs are, either a Jungian discarnate entity that, you know, or a magical egregore that people are creating, or, you know, an actual, you know, malevolent demonic spirit that is uh, using these things as a perfect uh, conduit to uh, make people go out of their minds. Well, as a caveat to this, um, in this interview with Kipri and Armani, he was um, commenting on some of the popular new AI apps that people are uh, that people are doing, and also he would uh, like ChatGBT and the various AI art generators, like the one that I use to generate the slides for uh, for these shows, so you don't have to look at my ugly face, but he was it was really interesting because he was talking about before he got into the woo woo he was talking about some of the practical applications that uh that this is that this is doing and you know a lot of people are freaking out about ai generated art especially people in the creative industry and you know my my um degree is in uh, digital animation and you know when i was when I was going to school, um, you know, my, my primary focus was in, you know, character design and modeling and, and whatnot. And I also do graphic art and, you know, I, I also do freehand art, but, um, you know, I, uh, I was really fascinated with how this AI, you know, just created things flawlessly. And of course, you know, a lot of people who are, you know, getting their bread and butter from this are are really, really worried that, you know, people are just going to start creating AI art themselves instead of going out and, you know, commissioning artists to do to do work like this. And, you know, that's a that's a very legitimate concern. And and of course, the uh, the pieces that I generate with these uh, with these applications, I don't really consider this. I mean, yes, I, I, I do respect, you know, what some creators are, are doing and, you know, using it to enhance uh, their own art creations. And, you know, there are some AI generated apps that don't just pull random uh, images from the Internet. But, um, you know, obviously it's going to have a, de- a deleterious effect on the creative industry to an extent. But, um, you know, I think that I think that people should use it for, you know, to come up with with concept, come up with concept art, which is primarily what I'm using it for. Um, you know, when I when I get my comic skate campaign underway, I uh, I'm, I'm going to be commissioning, you know, actual artists and colorists to do work. And, and you know, a lot of these images that I'm creating, these are just um you know concept art images but anyway i I went off on a little rabbit trail there back to what kipri and armani was saying about this art is um (laughs) it actually ties into what's also going on with chat gpt um people are you know using the ai generated app uh for chat gpt and i and i've never used this i refuse to use it i don't even use you know alexa or, or google or anything like that to um to uh, you know, converse with an AI. I, I just refuse to do that. But um, I, I do have some fun with the art. But um, apparently, it's getting to the point where it seems like the uh, the AI has some type of consciousness. I don't believe it actually does, but it's able to approximate it well enough to actually fool people and have conversations with people. And what Kiprian was saying is that you know, eventually, everyone is going to be just locked up in in their own little coom pod and they're going to be interacting with you know these bots that aren't even real and that's essentially going to be their whole lives and you know the tech is is eventually going to just use us as human batteries you know if if uh if we let it get to that point but you know, at least that's my you know that was my spin that I took on what he said you know he he wasn't quite so black pilled about it obviously because you know he's a man of faith as as am I but um you know the these are the potentialities of the the dangers of you know this this tech you know going on and being allowed to uh 
being allowed to pursue its present course unchecked. Um, I, he was also talking about how, um, when we, when we use those, uh, I believe it's called Verifone, but when we go on sites where we have to, uh, prove that we're a human, when we're trying to get some information and it shows, it always shows us traffic images. That's because what we're actually doing is we're training the AI, uh, for the future self-driving cars. Basically we're, you know, ma we're manually showing them this is a light, you know, this is an intersection, this is another car, you know, this is a building, this is a wall. And, uh, <laughs> they're basically having us do that for free. Um, you know, instead of paying people to manually go in and do that, you know, basically he said something very true. He said, you know, if, if the service is free, you're the product. And, you know, we're, Essentially, when we're interacting with uh, these AI art creating images and these chat GPTs and also things like Verifone, what we're doing is we are training this AI to approximate uh, real life human consciousness, um, you know, CGI image or uh, AI generated images that that look uh, near photorealistic. It, in some high quality cases is getting to that point. I mean, in, in some cases, in, in some of the apps, it still has a bit of a way to go, but it's just, it, it is getting better and better and we're teaching it to get better. And so that's essentially the end game. Um, you know, the digital, the digital gin, um, is basically a, a demonic consciousness and it's, you know, basically propagated itself, uh, in these little sorcerer's mirrors that's in a way that's, uh, captivating the minds and hearts and, and, uh, and consciousness and souls and livelihoods of, you know, almost every adult on the planet. And, um, we really have to be spiritually vigilant if we have a if we have a spiritual path and we actually have a life out in the world and we interact with people as we should it's it's really unhealthy the atomization that's taken place over the last three years so you know we need to get out we need to you know make contacts with our friends we need to we need we need people to interact with because you know this atomization is going to hurt us right into a coom pod <laughs> so that is my commentary on this one heading down the highway sand in the wind arc then a straight line booga booga while information is still fluid we need to use this technology for good that's what my opinion is we share ideas and we create that's what we do Having said that, we should also use analog whenever we can, um, especially in ways that we can be creative, uh, in ways of thinking outside of the, uh, of the technological digital box, in ways it's expanded us in, in ways we couldn't imagine because of the fluidity of information, but in other ways it's also made us very vulnerable and we can circumvent this with, with, um, with implementing old, uh, implementing old analog technologies. Recently saw the movie Nope, and I actually enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was a really good story, very interesting, and it, uh, it has to deal with a little-known um, field of cryptozoology um, where you're, you're talking about biological UFOs, essentially, you know, a UFO that's an actual animal and not a, uh, and not an extraterrestrial spacecraft. And the one on one podcast, who also deals with woo woo subject matter, uh, just recently did a podcast about biological UFOs and was talking about that very same thing. And so it, it was interesting that I had just recently seen the, the Nope film on HBO Max, I believe, or Prime. And then, uh, and then I saw the, and then I listened to the one-on-one -on -one podcast, and I thought, okay, that's, th this is a phenomena. This is a cryptid phenomena. I thought it was a really interesting uh, premise for a story when I saw the when I saw the film. But um, <clears throat> this also um, 
sort of uh, segues into the uh, biological horror or uh, um, that you see in um, cosmic horror, like in uh, like with some of H.P. Lovecraft's stories or with um, Annihilation, the the uh, trilogy that uh, that that deals with. Um, that was a really good film with Natalie Portman, but um, Quinn, who has uh, Quinn's ideas, shout out to Quinn. Um, he's got, he does a lot of really great work on his channel, but uh, he's got a lot of videos about uh, about that trilogy, and it's really informative and really interesting. But it it has to do with um, the uh, Area X in in the uh, trilogy where Annihilation is the first book. I can't remember the name of the trilogy, but it has to do with, you know, this possibly being some type of, you know, biological uh, terraforming technology gone awry, you know, or gone rogue. And it, uh, it, it really is, it really is fascinating. It, um, you know, when it, when it talks about, you know, weird biological specimens that could be predatory, um, you know, and things that we, we don't necessarily encounter in our day-to-day -day existence. You know, I can straight up self-teach myself anything. For those of you who haven't heard the treat of me um, demonstrating how I self-taught myself Mongolian throat singing, here you go. See? Yo, I was trying to be cool, but then this, like, effete little dude decided to like throw my homies under the bus and so I like I like really asserted myself I like screamed I like scream I had him in tears I had him in tears because I self taught myself the way of the ninja and the way of the salmon and what does Fifi say about the salmon? Well, this is very important. Fifi says, fuck the salmon. Quite literally. Because it's natural. Smoked salmon. You don't like no smoked salmon? Don't you be no talking no trash to me? <laughs> now, just to qualify, I'm only talking about salmon. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. By natural, I mean the salmon's natural flavor. I like the natural flavor of smoked salmon. I'm, I'm a bit of a food snob. I'm a gourmandizer. You know, they say that we've poisoned the ecosystem to the point that all fish has um, trace amounts of mercury in them. And so if you eat fish every day, apparently you can get mercury poisoning. Now, I believe this is all a conspiracy. I believe that the mercury was deliberately put into the fish, particularly the smoked salmon. And they want to see who can alchemically metabolize it and develop psi abilities. This is like Operation, um, Operation Paper Fist, you see. And when I say they, I know exactly who they are. And they're rounding up a whole mess of people with psi abilities, and they're going to turn them into an elite core, like an evil legion of supervillains, like in the Super Friends cartoon, only it's going to be a bunch of Globo Skittles people. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Hey, wait a minute. Sorry. Guys, this is really weird. I'm looking at the top of this bucket over here where I keep the kibble, where I uh, feed the neighborhood cats, and there's like this little pulsing circle of light on top of the lid, and there's like two little specks inside the, inside the pulsing circle, and it looks like they're two ants. Like, what is going on with this? <laughs> Holy shit, they're talking to me. Psst, fuck yeah, I'm the fucking spirit of your fifth generation dead queen. What you am is 
You two ants should do um, some butt stuff. Oh, we already are. That's always something to you. Oh, um, okay. I want you to be my dark angels, and I want you to go back to your colony and kill everyone. And when you get to the queen, that new bitch, you eat her face. What? You heard me. Why? It, it's a Judge Holden thing. Don't even worry about it. Just fucking do it. I said just fucking do it. Why are you still there? You're stuck. What do you mean you're stuck? Oh, for fuck's sake. You know what? You two bore me. <laughs> so the white pill in all of this shit show that's going on with globalism is that the oligarchs aren't, they aren't uh, omnipotent. And so, you know, they can make mistakes and they can do stupid things too. And I really think that they've overplayed their hand. So, you know, we, we, we could see, uh, we could see the end of, uh, like I said before, we could be watching the end of their hegemony, and uh, hopefully, you know, there are good things ahead. I do feel positive, so I will end on that note. Bye, motherfuckers.